it's totally useless how we are teaching our kids today. Man kann es sich einfach nicht anders vorstellen. Die Leute haben das immer so erlebt und immer so gemacht und allein schon die Gewohnheit. Hi Sama, my name is Daniel. I will be your language teacher for today. What language would you like to learn? The unemployment is potentially going to continue to go up given the economic strains in society. Training these young people to have the mindset of being job creators is more important now than ever. What we need to do is help children become fearless about learning because we are leaving the era in which you can depend on a single skill to last your entire lifetime. With the impressive advances that technology has made in the last few years, it was just a matter of time until those intelligent machines appeared in the world of education. Robots in the classroom, digital assistants, and AIs are enhancing personalized and remote learning, autocorrections, and access to knowledge at a speed never seen before. These technologies, with many other applications being developed every day, have started to disrupt a field which has tended to be rather conservative. These advancements have started to create a buzz and simultaneously brought up some fears. One of those concerns is, will teachers be superfluous one day and entirely substituted by AI? Hi Sama, my name is Daniel. I will be your language teacher for today. What language would you like to learn? I should probably brush up on my Mandarin. Listen okay. carefully and try to remember and repeat what they say. Well, Sama, let's just say you're going to need to practice a bit more. Okay. Let me know when you're ready to try again. How will these technologies affect the role of the teacher in the future? With the engagement of this uh, artificial intelligence system, the role of the teacher is changing a bit. It's more turning into a mentor rather than to, to the you know, teacher is teaching you the knowledge. The teacher's classic figure as a communicator of knowledge could be fading away behind those new AIs and other technologies. But why? Oftmals glaube ich, dass sehr viel zu viel standardisiertes Wissen weitergegeben wird und zu wenig Wert gelegt wird auf andere. Lern- und Wissensformen, die eben bedeuten, dass man flexibler mit bestimmten Situationen umgehen kann. Wir müssen weniger Wissen lernen im Laufe der Zeit äh, und mehr können. Das ist, äh, was für uns wichtig ist. Wissen kann man heute natürlich im Internet alles irgendwie nachgucken. Because already knowledge by itself is not valuable anymore, because the knowledge is very accessible, like mostly it's accessible, of course. But uh, the way that the human being is processing it and uh, giving some new knowledge out of generated knowledge, I think that's the most valuable thing. Knowledge that is just a mouse click away in the ocean of the internet has made it possible for students and many others to access a vast amount of data that years ago was only available to teachers and scholars. How is this affecting the way we teach? It's totally useless how we are teaching our kids today, starting from kindergarten, ending with university, like we are preparing the uh, experts of 100 years ago. There's a boss who sits mm -hmm. at the front and uh, they lecture and instruct and then they give a command, you know, homework and all kids virtually turn in the same thing. We all are expected to know the exact same thing and to be better than the next person at it. Right? And our success is actually measured in how often we're better than other people at these at skills we actually have no interest in being good at. All around the world, every country is funding a public education system, teaching courses that were designed last century. Und ich glaube, unser Bildungssystem äh, ist relativ träge und langsam. Ähm, ich glaube, da müssten jetzt schon wirklich die Weichen gestellt werden. Is our educational system actually that traditional? Why has it not changed at all in the last 50 years? Man kann es sich einfach nicht anders vorstellen. Die Leute haben das immer so erlebt und immer so gemacht und allein schon die Gewohnheiten macht es gerade in dem Bereich für viele Menschen sehr angstbehaftet und sehr schwer wirklich sich etwas ganz anderes vorzustellen. Since the dawn of mankind, the transmission of knowledge from one generation to another 
has been an essential part of our lives and history. Through storytelling or imitation, the act of learning was always inherent to our society and a necessary means to the species' survival. In ancient Greece, with the academy founded by Plato, or in the Middle Ages, with the establishment of the first universities by Christianity, learning and education have always played a primordial role in the growth of our culture. But those examples only illustrate a few exceptions related to higher education, which only privileged citizens or the clergy had access to. For most people, until the 19th century, education occurred within the family circle or in small groups where the students were expected to learn a specific skill or profession. But with the arrival of the industrial age, the factory-based production system, the division of labor, and the complexity of the continuously growing modern cities, the need to create independent learning centers to train and educate future workers became an urgent necessity. This educational system was implemented more than 200 years ago, and it's essentially very similar to the one we are still using today. I think there must be a lot of work to do auch im ganzen Schulwesen viel mehr Digitalisierung und, und moderne Lernmethoden äh, Einzug erhalten. Ich glaube, da sind wir immer noch, gerade in Deutschland, sehr rückständig. Und ich glaube, das wäre ein erster wichtiger Schritt. The countries, I don't think they, uh, they reform the educational systems uh, uh, fast enough uh, to keep the pace with the technological changes. But I think, to be fair, that that would have also been uh, impossible to do. Im Bildungssystem gibt es naturgegebenermaßen eine Verzögerung, weil neue Lehrinhalte erstmal entwickelt werden müssen. The pace of technological changes seems to be too fast to be followed easily by educators and teachers. So what must be done? What we need to do is help children become fearless about learning because we are leaving the era in which you can depend on a single skill to last your entire lifetime. My dad's generation, they had an average of five jobs between the age of 18 and retirement. Uh, my generation in America, we will have 12 jobs between the age of 18 and retirement, and we should expect a similar increase for the coming generation. The next generations are expected to have between 20 and 30 different jobs in their lifetime, and those jobs could be in different sectors or trades. So there will be a growing necessity to learn new abilities every time. So what are the fundamental skills of future education? AI literacy, so we would have to start very, very early in, for example, child education to actually train people to how these systems work, how to question them, because it will affect you in the future. It actually already affects you now, because if you're using Google, then you're technically using an AI, and it's you know, a valuable skill to actually know how do you get the information out of Google that you're looking for? Wir ja, lernen in der Schule und im Kindergarten, wie wir über eine Straße gehen. Wir gucken nach links und rechts, weiß, wissen die Ampel zu deuten. Ähm, aber wir haben eigentlich nicht gelernt, uns souverän in dieser digitalen Welt zu bewegen. And the AI uh, education is one of the important things I think uh, in this direction because if we will not teach our children how all of this black box algorithms are working, they will also uh, raise up with this idea of, uh, you know, nonsense that, okay, it's doing something and I cannot do something about it. Every public education system in the world needs to think more deliberately, how do we make computer science part of the primary and secondary curriculum? Adding computer science to the curriculum is a step that public education worldwide must start considering. Every day, more and more of our interaction with the world runs through computers, algorithms, and AIs. So what are the benefits of computational literacy for young students? Das größte Potenzial, das die künstliche Intelligenz hat im Bereich der Bildung, ist sicherlich, dass es uns hilft, ähm, automatisiert und leichter Informationen zu erschließen. From the learning perspective, I think that's an amazing tool that can teach our kids new knowledge, creativity, also interaction. Also, there are lots of kids with disabilities who has uh, very low, uh, you know, social engagement, and that is a perfect, uh, I think, environment for them to be engaged. But these new robots and assistants are only available to a handful of schools and universities. Why is that? 
I would say it's mainly linked to the lack of investment in, in education. And in the past years, I mean, many austerity policies in Europe uh, led to lack of investment. A school system in which really the bandbreite of the complete umsteigen on iPad in some private schools bis hin zu einem kleinen Computerpool, wo man dann einmal die Woche kurz rein darf. Und das ist letztlich das Problem, dass diese Veränderung zwar überall zu spüren ist, aber nicht gesamtgesellschaftlich stattfindet. The austerity policies of the last two decades, lack of public and private sector investment and general skepticism of bringing children into contact with new technology at an early age are some of the reasons why these new developments are still not an integral part of schools. But there is another crucial question leading to this delay. Is technology making us slower and therefore more vulnerable? Die Frage ist vielleicht eher, stehen wir vor einer gewissen Verdummung ähm, der Gesellschaft, die dann wiederum missbraucht wird. Das Internet und die ganzen Dienste um drüber bringen, ist ja, dass man auch einen gewissen Grad an äh, sozusagen Selbstbestimmtheit abgibt als Nutzer und sich eben über solche Vorhersagealgorithmen in so einer kleinen Blase befindet. Und ähm, das wiederum äh, sorgt dafür, dass ich als Endnutzer ähm, einfach anfange, weniger nachzudenken. Education is about making people grow in responsibility, making people more uh, able to discern, to have judgments on very difficult matters. But on the contrary, we are building assistant that can do the job for you. So where is your creating leading to? Nowhere. You don't need any creativity. You don't need any uh, skills. You don't need any education at all because you won't have to interface directly with other people. Das ist vielleicht das Hauptproblem, dass ich einfach sozusagen das eigene Denken abgebe und dann eben auch langfristig eben auch weniger kritisch bin. The gradual loss of our critical thinking and grasp of reality is one of the main concerns surrounding technology's integration into our kindergartens and schools. Many see this as a danger in which we could gradually lose contact with ourselves. So how can educators prepare younger students for artificial intelligence and personalized robots in schools? From the educational perspective, when you have a robot in your school or in your playground, I think the main uh, focus should be the social engagement of the kids, uh, not the isolation. Because when we are talking about the personalized toys, by personalization we mean the robot that is only attached to one kid and to nothing else. And that sometimes can lead to the loneliness or to the, some emotional you know, attachment to the robot and to no one else. That's also one of the things that, that we should take care about. So if the, the technology could help people to get skills, to get knowledge with their own tool, then use it. Only if, if it's uh, in, a, in an environment where there is a human interaction. Paradoxically, human interaction will become our strongest weapon in our relationship with machines. But how will that change us? I think that it could be easier, but also it's like, how much are we gonna lose, you know? Like from our own skills. I prefer humans, basically. To talk to humans, humans. I think we have to be careful with it, as um, it can take a lot of our humanity too, so. That gradual loss of our humanity and grasp on reality are some of the fears surrounding AI and robot implementation in our schools and our lives. Indeed, the last two decades of living with the internet were not very promising. A society torn apart and radicalized by technologies that many of us use daily but don't fully comprehend. It is understandable that some educators don't want those technologies in the hands of young students. But what could we teach our youngest to avoid such misuse of technology? Es geht nicht um die Bedienung von Computer. Die Schüler müssen nicht lernen, wie man einen Text schreibt oder wie man mit einer Tabellenkalkulation etwas ausrechnet. Das können sie so oder das lernen sie auch so. Es geht ja wirklich um Medienkompetenz. Es geht darum, dass man Dinge hinterfragt, dass man auch lernt, zum Beispiel das, was bei Wikipedia steht, nicht alles die Wahrheit ist. Da geht es gar nicht sehr um ganz konkrete Technologien, sondern eben um Grundsätze. 
Ja, ähm, und zum Beispiel den Grundsatz, was bedeutet das, wenn ich von einer Stelle im Internet eine Webseite aufrufe, was kann jemand Drittes über mich überhaupt da lernen? Und äh, letzten Endes geht es vor allem darum, dass man den Schülern beibringt, sich kritisch auseinanderzusetzen mit dem, was man benutzt. Sehr viel Sinn machen würde in der Zukunft stärker auf die Frage einzugehen, woher kommt meine Information und wie habe ich die einzuordnen in einem bestimmten Kontext. Und ich denke aber, dass es eine Informationsgesellschaft einfach notwendig macht. We need to teach all generations to be critical of digital assistants and robots, to question and confront the information we receive and its sources. But primarily, we should adapt ourselves and be prepared for an ever-changing world altered by technologies like AI. Hi there, Armando, the producer and director of the documentary you're watching. I hope you're enjoying it, and if that's the case, check down in the description below where you will find the links to all the three documentaries about the AI. Keep watching and have a great day. And in this changed world, the attention of the last years has been centered on introducing those devices into our schools and universities. What about our educational curriculum? Is it following the pace of technological development? People all the time think about how can we improve school? And what they think about is how do we use technology in the classroom, but to still teach the same stuff that they learned when they were young. Whereas today's kids, the thing they want to learn more than anything else is things like coding and computer science. And meanwhile, if you go into a school in almost any part of the world and you look on the faces of students, their eyes are glazed over because they're memorizing something from a history book that is important but not as engaging as what it would be to create an app, to create a small business, to create a website. Using technology to be creative and entrepreneurial is one of the current generation's main characteristics and interests. Entrepreneurship is seen as a model to fight technological unemployment and one of the central pillars in the education of the future. If you reach people at a young age where you can actually get them to think of themselves as people who actually are economic agents of change, who have the confidence and the capability to be an entrepreneur, it lasts for a long, long time. Being responsible and independent from an employer while owning your business and doing what you love the most is a beautiful goal to aspire to. Unfortunately, the reasons pushing the younger generations towards that direction are not always motivated by passion. The unemployment is potentially going to continue to go up given the economic strains in society. Training these young people to have the mindset of being job creators is more important now than ever. Automization, global recession, and ultimately COVID-19 have led to the loss of many jobs in the last years. And it seems this trend will continue in the foreseeable future. In the next five years, it is expected that 85 million more jobs will be displaced and around 90 million new jobs will be created. All jobs will disappear, new jobs will emerge, but then the new jobs will rapidly change and vanish. You take the average job in just the next five years alone, 40% of the core skills in that job will change. Ob es jetzt um Industrie, Logistik, Dienstleistung geht, Arbeitsplätze, Arbeitsinhalte werden sich sehr stark verändern, dann heißt das heißt, man muss Fertigkeiten ähm, erlernen, die einem ermöglichen, mit diesem Wandel besser umzugehen. New skills are to be learned by our workforce, but also taught in schools and universities around the world. But what are those essential skills of the future? Analytical thinking and innovation, active listening and learning strategies, um, technology use and monitoring, creativity, originality and initiative. These are the types of things that traditionally have not been emphasized by education systems. Um, and are things that people tend to pick up in the workplace. Now, these are going to be at a premium and rising. But also social skills, behavioral skills, I mean, how to interact, not only with the machine, but more with the human, is something where we will definitely and still need strong public, but also private investment. Creativity, flexibility to learn new things, technological know-how, human interaction. These are the skills needed to be prepared for the labor market changes that the future brings toward us at high speed. 
But what are the private sector and employers doing to support this rethinking? If you don't get it, or if you consider that the education system do not provide you, just take the people, train them, train skilled people, train disadvantaged people. Two out of three employers said that they will get a return on investment if they invest in people's skills. But in this current recession and with the economic pressures that they are facing, are taking very short-term decisions that lead to layoffs. And this is exactly the contrary that we should do. I mean, everybody, again, the overall narrative on new technology is skills, skills, upskilling, upskilling, but we are doing the contrary. The educational system and the private sector are going into different directions. Entrepreneurship and further education are two of the foundations of our labor market in the future. Both of them can be taught and enhanced in schools and universities. Still, if the private sector is unwilling to play along, we will have challenging times ahead of us. Und darin liegt ein grundsätzliches Problem. Wer sind die Treiber der Digitalisierung? Warum ist es nicht was, was gemeinsam von unten entwickelt wird sozusagen, wo die Menschen selbst Entscheidungen treffen? Rethinking education as a collective good, where people have decision-making power, where the goal is the collective empowering of students and the workforce, and where technology is used to develop this vision faster and more efficiently. How can we create the conditions for these technologies to positively impact our educational system? Technologie funktioniert so, wie sie von Menschen eingesetzt wird. Man muss den Blick richten, auf welche Akteure sind eigentlich dabei, Technologien einzusetzen. Exactly. With digital technologies, there has been a disconnect between the public and private sectors from the start. Finding a balance between these two sectors will be one of the greatest challenges for the educational systems of the future. What other challenges will people face in their quest for more and more knowledge? Festzustellen, dass das Leben ein Lernprozess ist und das Lernen auch das ganze Leben über andauert, wird eine von den ganz großen Herausforderungen. Wir wissen das inzwischen, aber unser Schulsystem tut immer noch so, als sei das ein bestimmter Abschnitt im Leben, der dann irgendwann endet und dann wird man professionell. I think it's bizarre that we spend so much time trying to get children to arrive at this age of 18 where they become an adult. We push them out of home and school and we ask them to choose a single skill that they should depend on for the rest of their lives. When really what's going on in the minds of children is they're not monogamous to a single skill. There's actually many things in life that interest them. And often what teachers and parents are doing is discouraging variety and insisting that they focus because you need to be focused in order to be competitive. Diesem Verständnis von Bildung entgegenzuwirken ist die ganz große Herausforderung für die Zukunft. The idea that we never stop learning has strengthened in the last decades. An always changing social, work and educational landscape impulsed mainly through technology has made us realize that our classical and somehow outdated educational system is not prepared to carry those fast changes. That is where a lot of the focus needs to be if we want to ensure that as a revival comes back into the economy, as the jobs market gets more dynamic again, um, we use this current window of opportunity to actually give people the right kinds of skills. It won't be from government alone, it won't be from business alone, but if we bring those two sectors together and provide a lot more online learning and training, this can work. Lifelong learning. Encouraged and driven by the internet and the accessibility to online studies, courses and workshops. It's an incredible social experience uh, to learn something together in a real space and collaboration. But it's not always possible for everyone, everywhere, to have that privilege of having a school with peers that share the passion that you have. So that's why online is so powerful, because you can live anywhere and you can go online and, and be anyone with anybody. How will this improvement in remote learning affect schools and universities? How will it look, the classroom of the future? Wird es eine Mischung sein aus Online-Lernen und in der Schule lernen? Wird es eine Mischung aus Gruppenarbeit sein und individuelle Arbeit? Ich denke, dass auf jeden Fall die Universität beibehalten werden soll und die Schulen, weil wir sind soziale Wesen und ich glaube, dass das Wesentliche, was man an der Universität lernt, 
ist, in Gruppen zu arbeiten, sozial zu arbeiten. Group work and interaction with others will always be the most pleasant and fruitful way to acquire knowledge and develop new ideas. But the new opportunities that the Internet offers us are almost unlimited. However, is our current educational system prepared for those learning platforms? Will it be flexible enough under the pressure of these new learning methods? I can very well imagine that in the future, children will have more opportunities to decide über ihre eigene Lernbiografie zu entscheiden, dass sie mehr Möglichkeiten haben, über die Methodik zu entscheiden, auch die Eltern in den früheren Jahren mehr mit einbezogen werden in die verschiedenen Möglichkeiten und dass ein Schulsystem flexibel genug sein könnte, um alle Qualifikationen, die ein Mensch im Laufe seines Lebens erwirbt, auch wirklich abzubilden und nicht nur das, was innerhalb einer bestimmten Rahmensetzung passiert. The validation of online education as a part of our curriculum will definitely improve employment prospects in the future. But who exactly is invited to be part of this educational revolution? Das Hauptproblem, dass nach wie vor eine wahnsinnige Korrelation zwischen der sozialen Herkunft von Menschen und ihren Bildungschancen besteht, die, der zwar immer wieder entgegengewirkt werden soll, die aber offensichtlich noch überall einfach Realität ist. Any technologies, whoever is inventing and creating a tool, they need to include everyone. We have connectivity, mm -hmm. connections, infrastructure. I mean, you just have to name it. Everyone is inventing. But distribution, who is distributing what? And who who's having access? The access to those technologies that promise to improve our learning is still far away from being distributed as it should. There is an enormous difference between rich and developing countries, and even in developing countries between public and private schools. And at the moment, the signs of improvement in this area are minor. Online learning, AI assistance, robots and incentives for entrepreneurship are the flagships of education in the future. A future where efficiency, perseverance and initiative are the goals to aspire to. A future altered almost every day at the speed dictated by technology. Are we prepared for such a challenge? Immer mehr lernen, damit wir unseren Job nicht verlieren, damit wir nicht zurückfallen und das Ganze ein riesen Stressfaktor und eine Belastung im Arbeitsleben wird, sondern Ausbildung sollte neue Möglichkeiten erschließen, sollte die Beschäftigten ähm, bemächtigen oder empowern und nicht äh, als ein äußerer Druck auf sie wirken, der noch mehr Stress äh, zur Folge hat. We should try at all costs to avoid turning education into a stress mechanism that oppresses our lives between jobs. Rather, transform it into a tool, an instrument that guides each of us in our long life of self-discovery. Education, whether it is school or lifelong learning, this is a way also where people can not only upskill, but they get empowered in the society. They shouldn't prepare you for a job. They should prepare you for life. They should help you to grow up, to be human. Preparing you for your life, a goal that we should all aim for. With our children, our students and our friends. We should never stop pursuing our internal self-growth and personal development. Never forgetting our humanity, never letting any technology take from us, because that is what empowers us. That is the education of the future. Hi again, did you like the documentary? If you stay here with me, I guess yes. So thanks for watching and I would like to ask a small favor. Down below there is a link to MDB where you can rate and review our documentary. As an independent production company, it would be of great help if you could take a little time to do it. So thanks again and don't forget to subscribe.